Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today spawning in the north corner of the map playing in red we've got Beastie Cutie also going by the name of Worm playing as the English and his adversary today his opponent his enemy spawning in the south in blue it's Wham also known as Sheep playing as the Roos welcome everyone to Dry Arabia as always, good morning, good afternoon, maybe a good evening. And I'm excited for this one. We've got two of the very best players in the world. Beastie Cutie hailing in from Serbia and Wham in from Canada. And going by their kind of, I guess, pseudo names or different names either way. Their, I guess, Smurf counts. Wham in the north as Beastie. And Sheep in the south as Wham. Now this matchup is an interesting one, no doubt about it. Both civilizations have a good strength in, well, pretty much every angle. They're very good in the Feudal Age, very good in the Castle Age, and pretty decent in the Imperial Age as it happens as well. And I'm kind of curious to see how this one pans out. It's all going to come down to a lot of scouting, you believe, because it's not always the case that you have civilizations that can be quite flexible, and both of these civilizations can. Now typically they do have their strengths, of course the Rus have been playing a very nice playstyle into two town centers and then castle age. That's something they've been doing for quite some time. The English can do something very similar. Kind of curious to see if either player would kind of change up the playstyle for these civilizations. Go for something a bit different. Gold is in a forward position which make it a little bit more trickier for Wham. Potentially if Beastie decides to challenge this position. It's always a possibility. Now Beastie with the back gold is not going to have as much of a problem. He does have the potential to wall up on the west side as well. It's a bit of a lengthy wall. It's not easy to get up. But if he does make it happen, then he's got almost, well, three golds at the back. And that's very, very safe and secure. Also berries as well. It's going to be the Abbey of Kings for the English. No real surprises there as it actually happens. Because Council Hall, whilst it's that tried and tested landmark, the Abbey of the Kings offers a lot. The free king that comes out early puts a bit of pressure on the map. And keeps their enemy at bay and allows you to do various different things you want to as the English. For example, get a second town centre. The Rus going up with the Golden Gate. A little bit of a different play style here. We're pretty used to seeing the Kremlin. Looks like the Rus today though, opting for something a bit different. It does offer a lot more flexibility in terms of many buying resources. Potentially going for a second town centre himself. Because there's a way to do it as well with the Golden Gate. You trade in the stone for it. It is a bit tricky though because you probably have to gather about 50, 50 stone and considering a town centre now costs 350 stone you can have two injections of 150 stone and repurchase it. But you've got to make up the other 50 somehow. Of course, it's going to be by mining it. And as we wait for the action to kick on in I would like to say a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel whether it be on Twitch or YouTube. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm really enjoying Age of Empires 4 at the moment. I've paced it out for sure. I've actually got a load of really good games banked up, by the way. So if you haven't already and you've been enjoying the content, make sure you are subscribed. It really helps me out on the YouTube algorithm and other things. And if you if you watch the videos regularly, that is, it's a really good idea because um, hitting that notification bell will give you a little ping when I do upload. At the moment, I'm uploading every two days. And that's just to make sure that there's a bit of quality control. I'm not going to upload any of the bad games, just upload the best quality ones, the, the ones that are the most fun to watch ones that had some crazy stuff going on potentially and that way you know that whenever you click on a video it's going to be a good game and i think that's probably a good way to go because everyone's quite busy these days and you don't always have a lot of time to watch uh content and so you want that reassurance that it's going to be a good game now obviously it's my subjective appearance uh, opinion regardless you know regarding whether it's a good game or not but hopefully i've got a good grasp on that good judgment and i think it doesn't usually get better than you know beastie versus wham now, he did actually collect the extra 50 stone. In fact, a bit more than that has happened, I think. No, he actually collected, yeah, he collected 50 and then he traded one uh, ticket. And he's got the second ticket there. There we go. 350 stone. So you can take a really good look at the build order here. It's quite a bit of a, an older style one, but it's clearly making a bit of a resurgence. He's going to go for a bit of wood and place that second town set. He's got enough for the town set. It's probably going to place on the forward position where the gold is. That's something, of course, he's going to want to keep protected. And there it is. And build it with a good few villagers. The king probably isn't going to come out in time, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, actually, where is the king? I don't think he's out just yet. No. It takes a lot longer these days. So still 23 seconds before it comes out. 
I think she's probably looking to get the second town's... Wait, he's already built... Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's already building his second town center around the back there, Beastie Beast. Still mining stone. Holy moly. It looks like he's going to go for a really greedy three town center play. We've not seen that. Well, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a three town center play by the English. It does mean it's going to be a very slow start, guys. So just bear that in mind. But still, that's fine. We'll talk, a lot, we'll talk about a lot of things. Lots of things to, to chat about. Especially the public update preview. That's coming out soon. Now, this is not on the public update preview. This match. This is on the live version of the game, Season 8. So, none of the Siege reworks are applicable today. You've got the full force of the Manganels. And uh, it's been a really nice journey through the pub. The public update preview, Season 9. We casted so many great games for a bit. But now we're back on to the, uh, the usual build. I'm kind of curious to see whether these guys will go for Mass Siege again, because the Roos do it very well. And bear in that mind, I feel like in the Season 9 approaching us, if they keep the Siege rework as it is, the Roos might not be as strong as they once were. Now, if you're wondering what those Siege reworks are, well, Springalds are now designed to be more of an anti-melee unit. They do uh, damage that shoots through things. Basically, a Scorpion unit from Age of Empires 2, if you're you know familiar with that, with that game and that unit. And the Mangadels, they've had a bit of a reduction in terms of the boulder damage radius. And also, they don't target units they just uh they don't follow the units rather when they target them if a target is on the ground on say here that's where the manganel shots will shoot and the units can dodge it so there's dodgeability there for the enemy it makes it very very difficult to make really good use of the manganels I, I don't think necessarily things will stay the way that they are i think they may be made cheaper there's gonna be some sort of buff to the manganels because they're a little bit underwhelming in season nine speaking of underwhelming pretty underwhelming dive there by the king didn't really achieve too much but of course well, a bit of idle time, to be fair, and the king will be going back on to uh, heal on up, I'd imagine. That's a great thing about the king. He can do that. Charges on the scout, gets a bit of a couple of hits. Now, second TC for Wham, and he's just staying with second turn center. Not going for a crazy third like Beastie. But look at the uh, the farming real estate that's created by this. It's very nice, and he might even delete the mining camp before too long. If he needs that space, that is. We'll have to see. Plenty of villagers on the deer camp. Now, not going for the Kremlin does mean he has to support his economy with the wooden fortress because it gives him really nice buffering in terms of wood gather. 20% extra because of that wooden fortress. It's a very, very nice uh, bonus indeed. He's out on the deer camp nice and early as well. Something that's often overlooked actually is the English. Sure, you get farms, but I mean, you can't achieve it all, right? You can't go for three town centers and farms. That's super, super greedy. I mean, three town centers are already pretty greedy and you need this food. He does have survival techniques as well, so he's definitely got enough food coming on in to support the three towns under play. And that village count should start to escalate very, very quickly. Gonna wall up on the west side. And uh, keep that boar behind the walls as well. Got a lovely amount of food coming in for Beastie. He actually lost a the scout there, would you believe? Kind of curious to see if he's thinking about professional scouts. No, he's not. But he does have the, uh, the upgrade to get the deer hunt a lot quicker. There it is. There's the fast castle. Go for the high trade house. A really nice spot as it happens. Going to get plenty of gold per minute with that. King just about backs away. So now with this in play, I wonder whether, you know, the thing is, Wham's probably going to get a lion's share of the relics. I'm kind of curious to see how well Beastie can challenge that. It does have a king on the field, but of course not much else. Understandably so. He's pumping out three town centers. Can't really afford any production buildings. Looks like he's going to go for the Castle Age as well. <laughs> Would you believe? Now, surely it's got to be the White Tower, right? It, there's no way it could be the King's Palace, right? Surely. Oh, might shoot the Scout. It does shoot the Scout. Down he goes. Nice pick off. And that villager is going to be a dead villager there for Beastie, most likely. Oh, no. Just about gets out of there, thankfully. Saves his life. But nice walls as well. Will the Castle Age in play, though, soon for... Um, wham, I'm kind of curious to see what damage he can do. There's some exposed economy, but of course Beastie will be wary of that. And will keep an eye out. And everything else can be pretty condensed as it happens. You don't really want to be diving underneath three town centers, effectively. There's a lot of arrows that comes out of those. If they're garrisoned, of course. The castle is in play now. He's going to go for the uh, veterancy on the knights. Of which he has two and he is moving out on the map. 
I would love to see an early monastery because when you're going up against the English here playing very condensed in their base and very like sort of really kind of give out, giving up the map control, you really want to make the most of the control you have on the map whilst you can because it's not going to be like this forever. The English will eventually break out. When they will, they'll come in full force. Farm's coming out for Beastie to secure that food income long term. Speaking of long term, it does feel like we're going to have a long game today. So I hope you guys have got your snacks, your drinks. Brace yourselves for this one. Knight's going to dive in. Now, he might lose a villager or two, but it won't necessarily be the end of the world because he's got plenty more on the way. He's got a good villager lead as well. It's about damage limitation here for Beastie, really. Spam out those spearmen. And the good thing about his just one unit composition now with the barracks is that, well, we need to get damage here. The Roos are going to have to have in uh, some archers, right? The king forcing the issue here with the, the villagers on board and just harassing somewhat. Forcing Wham to pay attention to... My oh, no, the boar! Might get some villagers here. We shall see if a village goes down. Might just, you know. Wham's got to be careful here. Trying to get out of there. Knight joining the fight. And I think there is... Yeah, there's a weak villager. That, that villager's going to go down. That boar... Oh, no, the villagers aren't attacking the boar. They weren't. They're actually building the hunting camp, would you believe? Might lose a second villager here. Just about gets away with it. So just one villager. Although the king diving on in here for Beastie. We'll snipe another. Will Beastie get a third? He does. That's a great play there by Beastie. Really making the roost suffer. A patch of eight farms and plenty of spearmen patrolling as well. He's actually looking in a good spot, all things considered. They're a bit far off from that castle edge as it goes. But no relics brought in just yet here for Wham. Which is certainly a concern. He does have the monastery built though. So I suspect... We'll see some warrior monks soon. The White Tower can offer a lot of protection. A really nice spot. There's a lot of farming real estate here that can be had. Very safe and secure. And that's the thing, right? The Roos can't really punish this too easily. Just the, the way that Beastie's laid his map out. His base out. is looking really good. Steel Darrow can going to be coming on in. Getting the Man of Arms upgrade as well. So you can see a definite play into... Man of Arms and Longbows, most likely. We shall see. Well, there is a triple barracks play. It's got to be, right? I mean, you might even add in a couple more spim for good measure because there are a lot of knights on the field for Wham. But slowly but surely, Wham is obviously lagging behind the village accounts. That's understandable considering you know, he's up against a three-town center play here from the English. Another batch of eight farms. Beastie's looking in really good shape economically. One relic has been brought in, so that will help narrow the gap a little bit, but have to do a bit more than that, Wham. The longer this goes on, the further ahead Beastie gets. He's trying to do some damage with the units he's made here, Wham, but he's not had too much luck just yet. Archie Rangers around the back. Safe and secure for now, and kind of hiding that switch, which, I mean, you kind of expect it, right? The real question is, will he be really going for longbows, or will he go for crossbows? Because... Crossbows, in many ways, I feel like does the same work that a longbow can. Obviously, it has a little bit less range, but it's so good at taking knights down. And it's just as good, well, relatively just as good against uh, spearmen, of course. I'm kind of expecting to see crossbows here. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. That armor composition of man at arms crossbow, spearman crossbow, is incredibly strong. Yeah, it will be spearmen for now. Now, in terms of the gold coming in, look, look at that, 216 gold per minute on that high trade house. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, that does help bridge the gap in terms of village count, but still a big difference. Spearman Brace now. These guys will be sacrificed. There's nowhere to get out of this, really. The Knights will take these out. They were still feud laid units after all. Is up against Veteran Royal. Uh, not, not Royal Knights, but you know, regular Knights, Castle Age Knights now from the Roos. The Palisade Walls achieve a lot here for Beastie. Okay, he's going to go for archers of his own. So it's the knight archer combination. I've got to say, full crossbows could work quite well here for Beastie. Of course, he's got a couple of spearmen for that front line as well. A lot of spearmen that shares it happens. These are now veteran spearmen. But just coming off the boar. He's taken out most of the food though, so he's really leveraged. The usage of these walls. Outpost coming up. Trying to extend the network of castles bonus. Which is actually going to come in just in time. What perfect timing with that. 
And if he does engage, well, perfect timing on that tower for sure. Knight's trying to bring in the spim and they're going to do just that. Now there are a couple of crossbows in there for Beastie. He's trying to get those knights if he can, but of course the mobility working out there for Wham. Spearman though, just constantly poking and prodding those archers. They're going to get away with it in the end, but he did lose a couple at least. If you're thinking about Beastie's perspective. He's up at 99 villagers already. Where do you go here if you're Wham? Well, for now, just going for the deer camp. Now, of course, we should probably think about the gold veins because we are heading towards the 20 minute mark almost. And it so happens usually around 25 minutes, maybe a bit later for these civilizations because, of course, the roots get gold from the hunting cabins and uh, the high trade house, of course. But they will want to think about these gold veins, these 8,000 tile gold veins for the late game. Trying to perhaps secure it up with a bit of stone and keeps. Neither player got opting for that just yet. Looks like actually, though, Wham is thinking about the Imperial Age. Boyar's Fortitude coming on through. He's poking and prodding, but he's almost there. He just needs a bit more food. But it is a bit of a hard transition to food for the Roos often. Because they don't get cheap farms like the English do. A couple of man times going to be tanking against those Archer Fire for sure. And uh, he does have all three Sacred Sites and four of the five Relics. And you know what? Economically wise, that's actually putting Wham in a good spot overall. You've got to factor it all together. Four Relics, three Sacred Sites, the Hunting Cabins, the High Trade House... It's actually looking really good for, for Wham, all things considered. He's going to go for the high armory as well. The so siege engines could come out. Oh, look, the Mangonel's getting a good shot. Look how much damage it does. In Season 9, it's not going to do that much damage, that's for sure. Mangonels are great in this patch. Okay, Knights coming around the right side. Thought about trying to dive in the Mangonels, but finding it a bit tricky. Well, there's only one Mangonel. Could have come in through the choke point there, potentially, but... Doesn't want to engage until those Imperial Age upgrades are in, and understandably so. There is that high armory. Offering cheaper siege engines, and also unique siege engine technologies. Knight's just going to be cycling around the right side and see what he can do. Oh, I'm going to jump and get sniped. These knights possibly thinking about diving, but you can't really achieve too much with that, right? We've got White Tower, three town centers. Got the network of citadels as well, I think, there. If I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure you can get it from the White Tower. Let's just take a look at it. Yeah, it's got a network of citadels, which 40% extra attack speed. It's a little bit bronkers. It's a little bit bonkers. The tide bars is going to be great for the roost, giving the extra bit of food, wood, and stone every relic. Every ten, every minute. It's a pretty hefty uh, amount, actually, as it happens. Four relics. Looking decent here for the Roos. He's pushing out, though, Beastie. This is the timing that he wanted. He's trying to punish the Imperial Age that's come in for Wham. But he will be up to the Imperial Age himself here, Beastie. I, I love this play, actually. I think this is a this is a strategic move. He's probably thinking about getting a Barksha in a forward position, right? Oh, massive Magnus shot on the villagers. Wham. Okay, he does react to it in the end, thankfully. But I think the only reason for Beastie to be on the map like this is he's probably thinking about getting villagers for a, for a Berkshire, maybe? It's not entirely clear. He's got the resources to do that. It's a little bit risky, but it does have good numbers. Yeah, there they are. There come the villagers. He wants a forward position on the Berkshire Palace. Mangonel's got to be careful. Nice dive on in. Took out a lot of the HP, but it still survives. A couple of shots he added into the mix. Oh, sprinkled there between the two wood lines. Snipes it. But there's the Berkshire Palace. Looking to go up here for Beastie. Does he have enough? I think he does, actually, as it happens. Those archers aren't going to achieve too much here for the Roos. A couple of knights cycling around the back as he doesn't want to get hit by the crossbows, but he will anyway. Knights trying to collapse on the villagers, but there's not going to be enough. And look at this, the man at arms going right on, on top of those archers. Not enough Strelzy here. Going to go for the bombard. Probably will snipe it as well. These man at arms are super tanky here for the English. Even Castle Age man at arms can do great work. Villagers coming out to repair. He saves the bombard. Just about. In the north, though, the keep, the Berkshire Palace will go up. The knights have all perished to the crossbows. And eventually, that Bombard will go down, maybe. He's keeping it alive for now. I think, actually, the Man of Times will all go down to the Keep Fire and the Strelsey. Crossbows remain alive, but there is that Barkshire now. And that Gold Vein 
is going to be denied once the units are cleared on out. The Bakshi Palace should be able to range that. And that's a big problem here for Wham. He's got to deal with this. Or potentially look to get the other gold vein on the right side. Look at that beastie. Looking to get control of it himself. It was a slow start, but I tell you what, things have heated up really quickly. Beastie getting a good foothold into the game. Controlling the gold veins. Wham. Let's go. Venture out to the pocket ones on the west side. But he's got to find a way back into the middle of the map. He's got to get control again if he's going to want to win the game. A couple of units go right down the middle. Going to go for the spring ord. About to snipe. It doesn't quite manage it. Trying to go for the trebuchet, maybe. The expensive losses despite the uh, high armory uh, bonuses there. Village come out to repair the trebuchet. He's done it once again to keep it alive, at least for now. Yeah, he will just about keep that alive. Nice, nice save there by Wham. It really helps out. Because he's going to need all the trebuchets he can get to take out the Barkshire Palace. Look at that beastie getting the keep up. He's got full control of the golds. Or at least he's denying this one on the left side. He's got control of the right one, that's for sure. Going to go for stone walls on the west side. Beastie with the extra economy. He's looking in a good spot. No doubt about it. But wham. He's coming through with three trebuchets. Right behind the woodline and the palisades. I love that play. It stops spring walls haltering and, and uh, stopping that. Trebuchets of his own, though, the English. It's going to be uh, a siege fest, which is, I guess, what Season 9 came to stop. But we're back on it. There's a good number of Strelts here as it happens. Strelts, Horsemen, really strong army composition here for Wham. Um, should do well to counter longbows or crossbows as it happens. But he's got to find a way to deal with those man at arms. Strelts will help with that. Especially if they deploy like this. Horseman coming from the right side. Looking to pick off any siege. All the crossbows on the back line. He will get surround. And it should be a good, good decisive fight here. He's going to collapse on the crossbows. But I think he's got enough of those crossbows to take out even these horsemen. And the Berkshire Palace getting involved as well. A couple more reinforcements from the south. Streltsy keeping up a little bit. The Beastie will survive with the, the majority of that army. He'll back off for now. And he continues to gather the precious gold on the map. Bear in mind... He does have uh, the enclosures upgrade. The kind of bonkers one. Getting passive generation of gold from the farms. Very nice indeed. But the big thing is that, well, he, he needs to mine the gold as well as just to keep up. Because enclosures is not as good as it once used to be. Still pretty decent in terms of gold income. But he's also going to want to bleed the map dry from gold whilst he can. He's got this position. It's definitely important to make the most of it. May not have it for long as the bombard comes on through. Manganel 2, Strelsey Horseman diving in. A couple of villages will go down. He's trying to get the outpost up. He will get it up for the extra vision. But this keep is under fire. The army is coming from the west side though for BT. Looking to challenge this army. He might get on top of the Strelsey, but they have deployed. They will be doing significant damage. The static deployment there. There we go. 30% extra attack speed after remaining stationary for 10 seconds. There they are. It's starting to come up now, but he has to move away now because... Beastie will not allow that deployment to, to kick him. But it's going on the right side. Where are they off to for Beastie? Maybe for the gold on the corner of the map, quite potentially. But the keep is looking to be on fire. He's taken up I mean, a decent chunk. Not, not a huge amounts, but he's taken a decent chunk of it. About a quarter of the gold in those reserves. The keep will go down, but he's starting to lose some siege engines. He's lost the second. Couple of springers from the right side. On the left side, rather. That's where they were th from. Three three of them. Roos looking to try and challenge that. The keep goes down. Villages will be lost over Beast. Not that it's too much of a problem. He's got plenty already working for him. And of course, got three town centers making them. This Berkshire Palace is such a good, strong position. This keep is being repaired. Has been a bit of a drain on the stone reserves. But of course, Wham keen to keep that up and running. He can venture out into the gold now on the right side here. I suspect uh, he might think to do that, although he's got plenty of gold in the bank. Of course, once you've got control of gold in the middle, you're possibly going to want to mine it. Well, I'm just splitting up the army just a little bit. Both players edging towards that population capacity of 200. And so many farms here for Beastie. In fact, how many has he got so far? He's got 55 farmers. Bear in mind, they're gathering gold as well. Who says that money doesn't grow on trees? They grow on farms, apparently, for the English. Speaking of farms, the Rus have started to establish their farming transition quite significantly. 
something that can hurt them quite a while in terms of their pressure. But he's got a good number of farms up himself. They're just going to want to try and snap out the bombard. Doesn't quite manage it, I don't think, if the village come out to repair. He might get it, actually, in the end. He does get it in the end. Pretty huge snipe. Swapping horsemen for a bombard is nearly always worth it. Oh, Springles. Uh, well. Okay. Bit too close for comfort. Lose at least one Springled out of that. Manages to get away with the rest. Now the pack. It's just a wolf that's being a bit pesky on the right side. Horsemen diving in the villagers. They're pretty exposed. There was no outpost. And BC's actually going to lose quite a significant number of villagers there. Wham in total has killed 45 villagers. Now BC still got the villager lead, would you believe? That's just how crazy a three town centre boom is for the English. But he's killed a lot on that gold vein. Barks Palace still remains standing. This keep still being repaired, would you believe? It's a big drain on that stone reserves. He's going to want to address the situation soon, I imagine, Wham. It's looking like he's doing it now. Quite a few Springles, though. Strelsey, they don't have a front line in front of them. They're Spearmen. That's going to be a good trade against Strelsey if they can get a couple of kills, I've got to say. And he looks like he will. Springles, though, going down for Beastie. He's just one remaining. Going to focus on the... Oh, so there's another Springle down on the, on the wood line. He does lose it in the end. Bombard needs to get rid of that Springle if he can. He's not shooting at it, though, would you believe? And he might lose his own Bombard if he's not careful here, Wham. He's having to backpedal. Those Spearmen getting good value. And the Barkshire Palace whipping through the Strelsey numbers. He's starting to dwindle. Wham. He had a large mass of spring of uh, Strelsey, but he's, he's, he's just lost them all. There's barely any remaining. And that's a really good trade of army there for Beastie. You'll take Spearmen versus Strelsey any day of the week. Of course, the Spearmen don't cost any gold, and that's the reason why. You take that trade. He does lose his uh, trebuchet in the back with the horseman. But slowly but steadily, it feels like Beast is getting a foothold in the game once again. He's going to get a keep here on the right side to gather the remaining gold. Just as well. He's going to need it. Look at the food bank here for Beastie. Absolutely phenomenal. 7,000 food. And that will allow him to continue to pump out units. That's the big deal here. Just the ability to replace army that's lost. Doesn't want to dive in too much there. A couple of hand cannon here sprinkled in for the English. And he's looking to get the keep on the west side of gold. This gold a bit closer now with the Berkshire. Get control of that gold. A lot of gold remaining, of course. Spearman tanking against the Streltsy. And I feel like Beastie just throwing away a lot of units, but they aren't gold units. It's the big thing to think about. He's saving that gold for a rainy day. He will lose this army. Horsemen should be enough to clear this one up. Although reinforcements coming on in. I think it will be a clear up here for Wham. The question is, does he have what it takes to push on from here and get rid of that keep in the middle? He needs to deny the gold income that's been mined for the English if he can. But actually, it starts to dwindle in a lot of numbers. There's not a lot remaining for Wham. 11 military. All of a sudden, this grind is starting to halt for Wham. I've got to say, doesn't have the food income that Beastie has to match. 3,000 versus 2,000 per minute. And these farms are just so good. He's pretty safe at home. Beastie has not been raided for a long time. Looks like it's his turn to send some units to be raiding. Well, he's given the attack notification, unfortunately, so Ramp will be aware of this. The question is, how does he respond? Horseman coming in there on the right side. Spearman brace. Mangonel gets a couple of shots off. He's trying to gather stone. He probably wants some keeps if he can. Villagers have vacated this gold vein. Beastie was looking for it. Down the middle. Horsemen charge on through, but they're going right directly against Spearman. Longbows behind them. The Longbows are focusing on the Strelsey, which is almost certainly the right move. If he can take the Strelsey numbers down, Ram is going to be in all sorts of trouble. There aren't that many remaining. Good few Longbows here. 23. Could do some really significant eco damage. Now he does have enough stone for a keep here, Wham, so he might look to get one defensively to cover these farms. Because Beastie is waltzing on in. He's going to pick off a lot of villagers. This is a problem for Wham as it happens. His ability to reboom in a village count is not really quite the same as Beastie's. He's only got two town centers. He's still got to hit a healthy villager count. Although that might change quite quickly. Bit of a raid on this wood line. And a good raid around the back. He's picking them off. Couple of horsemen going to dive in. Only three, though. Uh, three more joining the fight. Village is coming out, though. A bit prematurely, though, for Wham. He wants the food. 
I think Beastie will take that. He's going to get at least five or six villagers for free, really. Cinderiario is doing so much. Will be cleared up in the end. But Wham, he's definitely on the back foot. A lot of siege, but not too much protecting them. He's got to be careful here. Push in from Beastie could be devastating. Forcing the army back at home for Wham. He's, uh, he's, he's got a big chunk of the gold. I'll tell you that much. Now, longevity-wise, it will come down to enclosures versus the hunting cabins in terms of gold income. Oh, good Maganel shots from the Spearman, but I mean, ultimately, Beastie won't mind losing Spearman at this stage. It really does come down to premium gold units. Strolsky for the Roos. Man at arms, I guess, for the English. We don't see that many man at arms anymore, though. And in fact, there's none on the board for Beastie. But he's stockpiling that gold. He's saving it for a rainy day to push on out soon with a high-quality army. You see the army value for the Roos is just so much higher. And this is kind of interesting to think about in this strategic position. I, I feel like Beastie, what he's doing here, he's making sure he's safe and secure. He's going to make what we call trash units, which are units that don't cost gold. And he's going to try and take out as much of the Roos gold army as he can. Once he's done that, once he feels like he's achieved that, and ex uh, kind of, I guess, extinguished the gold reserves that Wham has, it might be then that Beastie switches into his high army, high army value units. Whether it be Man at Arms, Crossbows, just probably the likely units that you'll see. He is stockpiling heavily, Beastie. We do also see this strategy. It's also about the units you make, but also the balance of the economy to military. He's definitely got a heck of a lot more economy, but he's banking resources and he might even kill some villagers of his own. He might just delete them when he feels it's necessary, when he needs more population space. Might not be any time soon though, because these three rams should be able to break through this keep pretty quickly, especially with the torch damage from Spears potentially, but he's going to go for the villagers instead. Wham's villager count is actually really starting to plummet. Down below 100. Does leave more space for military numbers. They do take down the Barkshire, takes down the keep already. A couple of spring holds. Oh, they're pretty exposed. The swordsman should dive on them. Villagers having to scamper for their lives. Might look to try and repair the Barksh Palace. We shall see Beastie on the right side, though. Trying to apply some pressure. He's walled out for now. And he's going to get a lumber camp there. I don't know what that's about. But either way, the villagers do try and repair the Barkshire Palace. But it's probably a lost cause. Because there are a lot of Streltsy there for Wham. And he will clear this up. The Barkshire Palace will be lost. Maybe, just maybe, the Roos are getting control in the middle again. But he's being pegged back at home. He does have a keep, though, at home, just to help reinforce and protect those farms. But look at the bank of resources. More than 10,000 food. Just upwards of 3,000 gold for Beastie. And he's a really good, strong position in terms of his bank account. With the rooster pushing down the middle, it almost feels like Wham senses he can push on through, but there's not much of a meat shield here. Mostly just Strelsey. The spin might chase this down. The tax cut. Wait, where are these bomb? Okay, well, there's a bombard here apparently on the left side. A massive raid on the right side with the Spearman. And Wham continues to lose a lot of villagers. Look at that. The villager kill count has them pretty much equalized. Which is kind of crazy to think about considering how high it was, the differential between them for a long period of the time. The biggest problem is that Wham doesn't have the economy to match the English at this point. Slowly but surely, his numbers are being whittled down. And it's not always just the village account that's important. It's the idle time that's been caused. Villagers have been back and forth from security to farms. And he's barely farming at this point. In fact, he's only got 29 villagers on farms. Just around about half of what Beastie has at the moment. Oh, Pan Cannoneers lost for free there, mostly. Siege is moving out for the Roost, though. That's a... Big death ball of siege. Could be dangerous if it's not stopped quickly. And look at that. It probably will be stopped quickly because there's a lot of Springholds. Five of them. He starts by sniping out enemy Springholds. Takes out the Manganels as well, which will leave those Man Arms to chomp at the bit of those Strelsi. They have to get out of there. Longbows on the back line as well. Trying to narrow down the numbers. Pick them apart if he can. Strelsi are being microed. Retreating for now on the right side. He's taking care of the Rams. He's going to keep here on the stone on the west side. Trying to creep on out. Beastie, he's actually got... He's got the lead in terms of economy. Got the lead in terms of military count as well, would you believe? It is certainly food that Wham is struggling with at present. 
is back on gold on the west side, which PC should be aware of, actually, as it happens. Actually, you might not see that. Either way. Beastie is holding back. He's going to repair the Berkshire Palace. It's almost there, actually. Because, of course, the raiding has forced the Roost to just take stock a little bit, try and regroup, recover. Although, BC is not really too keen to allow that happen for too long, because he's, he's raiding once again. This time with Man at Arms. And it really does put a bit of a, a spanner in the works of the Roost, having the farms idle for so long. You can see the food income on the, car, on the bank. It's just not looking good. Uh, Beastie now. He's getting his premium army, right? High value army. Man at Arms. Hand Cannoneers together. Springles as well. Might try and snap out Trebuchet or two. He's going to go for the Springles first. He does take out most of them. Two versus two in terms of Springles. He's going to take a relatively even trade. That's good for Beastie. He's pushing on through. Oh, he might lose a couple of trebuchets here. He's going to sacrifice Banatars, but it's certainly worth it. Villagers come out to repair. He should be able to repair the trebuchet in the end. The Manatars probably fall to the keep, but there's a lot of idle time on these villagers. He body blocks, and he's actually going to lose a couple of villagers for that. Beastie is pushing right down the middle. I mean, that's a lot of villagers going down for Wham. He's got to be careful. Down to 78 so far. All of a sudden, looks like Beastie's starting to push in. He's, he's spent a lot of his gold. And look at that. The army value has switched. Beastie's recognized the situation that now feels like it's time to go. A couple of uh, Strelzi peeled off in the north, but hasn't seemed to have achieved too much there for Wham. The raids for Beastie certainly have been better. And the trebuchet is still being repaired, would you believe? He's on a mission, Beastie. He wants to take care of it. He won't be able to in the end. Wham keeps it alive. Now, at some point, this could become a wood game, you know. A lot of the wood has been mopped up off the map. A bit of a wood lines on the right side and on the west side. The biggest problem is down the middle. Looking to take, start taking down the infrastructure. That's actually a big deal. These three bombards are going to be super important. Sure, the big fight is by the melee mosh pit in the middle. With those man at arms tanking. Horsemen, though, are all but gone. It's mostly, it's mostly Streltsy, and you know what? These man at arms are right on their faces. He's got hand cannoners of his own, and he might just win this fight. I mean, to be fair, the man at get shredded. But he's doing some damage behind this. Springhold might be enough to force the bombards back. Now the villagers are on hand to repair. He's pushing on forward. He wants to take the siege out. He does. Now he backs away. But slowly but surely, Streltsy numbers are falling. He's down to 18 military BC. He's pushing hard. Look at the sea of red units moving down the middle. A couple of rams added into the mix. And BC, his bank of resources are so good. That population capacity is never dipping below 200, really. He's got productions on the front line, and uh, he keep reinforcing this army, and he will eventually break on through. Wham! is under pressure. He loses his high armory. One landmark goes down. Three more to go. These bombards, they're being hard to stop. Without the high armory as well, means a uh, lack of springles likely here for Wham. He's got to find another alternative way to get rid of these bombards. Seems a bit tricky, because a lot of units protecting them. Horseman trying to dive in. He's got Ram to contend with as well. Beastie keeps reinforcing his armies once they go down. He's got resources coming out of his ears as it happens. Not much gold remaining on the map. But that's okay. Beastie's got enclosures. 38 minutes into the game. It's been an absolute cracking game of Age of Empires 4. But it feels like slowly but surely, Ram is starting to lose his grip in this game. He's down to 76 villagers. Just about half of what Beastie has at the moment. That's a lot of units coming for Beastie. Feels like this is the last hurrah for the Roos. The final stand. Horseman Strelsey. Can he make this work? Can he hold on? The Bombards keep moving forward. They keep making their way through. Despite the Palace Gate. The Palisade Wars getting in their way. He's going for the Rams with the keep. And that will go down most likely. There's no villagers here to torch. This is a problem. He's being pushed on all sides. Especially down the middle. Bombard's going to take out the second landmark. The high trade house almost down. It's it's in flames. It's burning. Just one more shot would have done it. Oh, those Strelsi absolutely getting demolished. Although the Bombards might go down to the horsemen. Maybe this is a hold, but still looking a bit dicey. Landmark does fall, so two more remain for Beastie. 
but he might lose this position but he hasn't even dropped from that 200 population he's grouping up together he's now attacking down the west side looking to take this keep a massive blob of units more rams coming into the fray as well the bombards eventually go down but the army for the Rus have is pretty much gone and he doesn't have any food to replace that army with this war of attrition is certainly going the way of the English it seems so far. Probably needs a miracle here for the Rus. Will there be one in store for Wham? I'm not so sure. Oh, that's a couple of villagers that might be lo lost here for Wham. He's got the gate. He's going to go through the uh, wooden fortress and hide out there for now. But slowly but surely, Rams are moving forward. The army's a bit spread out. It's going to get keep on the right side. Maybe look to get the sacred sites. There's no real pressure for Beastie, right? And there it is, then, gentlemen. Gigi gets called. I mean, Wham realizes his position is not looking good, but it was a cracking game of Age of Empires. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Take care and see you next time.